Sara. I come from uh, Estonia. In the program, I'm named as uh, representing the uh, University of Victoria and uh, Western Washington University. It's because last year I was five uh, months as a border fellow in two of those universities. But my main job is in uh, Estonia, in an NGO, and we work mainly with Estonian-Russian cross-border cooperation. And uh, as we have this uh, large border bodies on the Estonian-Russian border, I mainly work with environmental issues uh, uh, on, uh, on our border. So, um, and I am going to talk uh, about Estonian-Russian border, although we have land border also with Latvia, but the Estonian-Russian case is much, much more interesting than with Latvia, who is also EU member and the Schengen country, and so it's not so many interesting things going on. So, uh, Estonian-Russian uh, Estonia border, it's an EU external border uh, since 2004. And uh, two thirds of our border goes uh, through this big transboundary lake, Pepsi, and also we have a transboundary river. And uh, we have uh, only three land uh, border crossing points. And uh, what is a pity about our region? We, you can't cross uh, the border by boat. There are no uh, water, border crossing. It used to be in Soviet time we had uh, uh, ferry boats going from Estonia, but uh, be between Estonia and Russia, but not anymore. Um, um, talking about the um, border crossings, we we used to have uh, very long uh, lines on the border, but uh, since uh, some years we have electronic electronic system to manage queuing on the borders. So you basically register yourself online before and you know what time you should go there. Um, uh, but anyway, it has decreased the, the waiting times on the borders, but anyway, there is a visa uh, between Estonia and Russia and, and uh, this visa issue is still problematic. Uh, that um, you need, it's very time consuming, you basically need two weeks to get the visa and it's also expensive. Uh, with uh, compulsory insurance, you pay some, uh, let's say, around $60. And, uh, and the Estonian uh, consulate in Russia gives uh, easily free visas without any payment and long-time uh, visas for two or up to five years. But the uh, Russian consulate uh, usually do not uh, give any uh, free visas. So, uh, so the, this border flow of people, uh, of, of the tourists, we, um, in uh, Estonian side on weekends, we see a lot of um, Russian buses. They just come to shop in, uh, in Estonian uh, border uh, shopping centers, but not so many Estonians would go for holidays to Russia. And many Russians use uh, Estonian Schengen visa to go further uh, to other Schengen states in, uh, in Europe also. So, um, uh, Estonia and Russia uh, border treaty um, uh, was signed uh, uh, by foreign ministers, uh, ministers five years ago, but none of the uh, parliaments have uh, ratified it. So, basically, we still do not have a border treaty between our countries. Um, cooperation uh, between communities uh, um, is very largely dependent on unfavorable conditions, on in international politics. Um, we have the sanctions to uh, EU sanctions to Russian, Russian import ban to our goods, and uh, on the economic level, we have uh, seen that the trade turnover between the, our countries have has shrunk some 50 percent in recent years. And for our uh, um, companies, uh, the sanctions have, uh, have had also a pretty bad influence. So as I said, the, uh, the, um, the work uh, we do between the communities, uh, on the, between the border communities, it's uh, very largely dependent on, also on um, national, inter, uh, interstate politics. 
Here you uh, can see uh, Mr. Putin and our president uh, Kalulait, and they met uh, a week ago uh, in Moscow. And the last uh, time our presidents met, it was uh, before Georgia war in 2008. So it has been quite a big step in our politics. And uh, uh, so I brought here two quotes. Um, Putin said that it's uh, a lack of contacts between officials, uh, official bodies, between neighbors. Uh, it is not a healthy situation. And so how uh, our president uh, replied to that, that uh, 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 what, what were the discussions uh, on, the, on the table that we uh, discussed that lengths uh, potential solutions of conflicts in Ukraine and Georgia with the positions of European and U Union um, are, are very different. So uh, she's, um, she's bringing this uh, as, uh, European uh, uh, politics to, to our inter-state uh, uh, and cross-border cooperation relations. Uh, so, um, yeah, in, we, we can see this one step that our states maybe are becoming, uh, starting uh, to make uh, uh, progress in cooperation, but uh, uh, on the other side, um, uh, last year Estonia started to build a new very high secure fence on the land border, and uh, the main reason is we, last year we had have had a lot of illegal migration, not, not from Russia, but coming from Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, also Vietnam. So, uh, uh, more fences uh, in worldwide. Um, so, in the border region, uh, we have many different uh, cultures, uh, uh, multi-ethnic, multi-ethnic, multi multicultural area. Uh, here you can see, um, Narva, Ivangorod, Twin City, Estonian and uh, Russian town, which used to, um, they used to function as a, um, one unit in Soviet time, but not really anymore. Then we have a uh, um, Seta minority, uh, the, the, the ladies uh, on the right, and uh, this minority group we have on the both side of the border. And we have this religious community, old believers. Um, and uh, talking about the uh, Russians in the border region, here we can see a uh, um, lot of uh, Russian media influence or the, 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 the cultures or ideas, they are, they are influenced also a lot by the, uh, by the uh, Russian uh, media. Um, so, um, uh, the, um, the border region uh, e on both sides is rather poor. We don't have uh, uh, no big industries. We have a lot of EU funding last year, uh, which has contributed to the uh, infrastructure development, building the roads, wastewater treatment plants, also culture, tourist development, people-to-people -people cooperation. Uh, but despite of this all EU funding, it's still a poor region. Um, and uh, here I brought this, I made this photo some years ago when I, we had the interviews on border communities. This is what the um, local people uh, do. In summertime, they go and pick berries and mushrooms and then they sell it to the, uh, uh, to the markets or, or the big cars come and collect them. So <laughs> this is what the, what the people do there. It's a rather rural area, a lot of uh, forest and uh, no, no industries. And uh, so talking about this uh, border flows, some years ago, um, uh, the uh, petrol, petrol smuggling, it was really a, a large issue and many cars, some people crossed the border five times a day to sell the petrol. Uh, this was the local businessman, but this was then uh, stopped. So it's really not much up anymore. How many minutes do I have left? Two minutes. <laughs> uh, some years ago, we had another project uh, where we made uh, interviews with local stakeholders, asked about their motivations and uh, about cross-border cooperation and, and how do they feel about the border. And what came out from the interviews that uh, the Russian, uh, the Estonians inhabitants, uh, Estonians and inhabitants, they often th say that they really don't interest uh, what, they, what they takes place in Russia or other side of the border. And they even don't know how, how to travel there to their biggest cities. 
Um, but for Russian uh, uh, border inhabitants, travel, uh, what, it, what happens in Estonia and traveling in Estonia, it was really important. And this is, as Estonia consulate gives uh, visas very easily, then they use this uh, opportunity and travel often to Estonia. And they feel themselves more Europeans than uh, uh, they think they are more Europeans than, than from the other uh, parts of, uh, of Russia. Uh, so, as we work a lot with NGOs, uh, um, we can see that uh, mm, it's really problematic, the civil society organization uh, situation in Russia. They have this, uh, Russia in introduced a new NGO law in 2013, and uh, which makes uh, very difficult from, for NGOs to get uh, foreign money to implement some projects. And they are called, uh, when you get the European Union or US money, you are called as a foreign agent and you have a certain auditors coming to your NGOs. And, and really NGOs do not, uh, Russian NGOs do not want to get much involved with uh, this Euro European or US projects anymore. We have, um, what is facilitating our cooperation is the Estonia-Russia cross-border cooperation program, and here are the, the, the priorities. Uh, SME development, border management and environment, environmental protection, and environmental protection is really one of our flagship.